Hey guys, Adam here with americantrucks.com and on this episode of The Haul, we're going to be taking a look at three different tire sizes, comparing and contrasting them, talking about their pros and cons, and then I'm going to give you my best recommendation as to how to fit these popular tire sizes with some of the most popular lift kits. Now the three trucks behind me are my 2016 Silverado LT, completely bone stock off the factory line with stock 31 inch tires. Next to that is a 2014 Silverado LTZ, sitting on a rough country 3.75 inch suspension and body lift and 33 inch tires. Finally on the end there is a 2011 Sierra with a 7.5 inch suspension and body lift combo with 35 inch tires. I'm also going to take that 2014 out with the 33s for a driving experience test, see how it feels on the road, give you my thoughts and concerns about it, and then I'm going to throw the 35s on and show you how the fitment issues can arise when you put those big tires on such a small lift. Now before we get into all that, we got a lot of juicy content for this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on cool content like this, as well as product reviews and installations. You definitely want to check that out. Now just to jump right into it with my stock tire from the 2016 Silverado LT. Now this one right here is going to be one of the many options you get off the factory line for your Silverado. They do range a little bit in tire size and wheel size, but ultimately the characteristics will stay the same across the board. Now this one here is a 255 7017 Bridgestone Dueler HT tire. It's an all season tire. Now it comes standard on a lot of light to medium trucks, even SUVs and Jeeps, because it stays quiet on the road, which is one of the most important factors. It's comfortable. It provides decent traction and some pretty good fuel economy. Now, like I said, the different measurements will range from the different trim levels, ultimately up to a 285 45 22. But again, those characteristics do remain the same. Now, the sidewall here is a little bit shorter than most aftermarket wheels, which eliminates some of that squishy or bouncy feeling you get while daily driving, which is definitely a bonus in my opinion. Now, if you're into keeping your truck all original, you like the factory setup, this is a perfectly satisfactory tire. Now, with that said, I've put about 15,000 miles on this exact tire here and I've got absolutely no complaints. Now the wheel itself is a 17 inch by 8 inch wide wheel with a plus 24 millimeter offset. Now that positive 24 millimeter offset refers to the distance from the hub mounting surface to the center line of the wheel. Now it's pushing out plus 24 or positive 24 millimeters toward the outside of the truck which ultimately has the tire sit in a little bit farther into the wheel well toward the frame. Now once you start going with the aftermarket wheels with the bigger and wider setup that offset ultimately will change. Now moving on to our first set of aftermarket wheels and tires, arguably one of the most popular wheel upgrades, the 33s. Now this particular tire is a Nitto Mud Grappler and as the name suggests, it's a mud terrain tire. These will definitely serve a bigger purpose for those off-roaders who are hitting the trails, going in a lot of mud, looking for maximum traction because these are one of the nubbiest tires on the site currently. These will perform far better than the stock 31s which weren't terrible off-road but obviously they are going to lack in the traction department. Now these 33s are wrapped around a 17 inch by 8.5 inch wide matte black fuel Anza wheel. Obviously they look pretty cool but the more important factor here is the size. They are a half inch wider than the factory rims and of course the 2 inches of additional tread and sidewall of the 33s over the 31s will add some bulk to it as well. Now the offset for these is a negative 6 millimeter which obviously means the center line or the center hub will sit 6 millimeters back towards the inside of the truck which pushes the wheel out toward the outside. Basically the complete opposite of the stock wheels. Now that will result in some noticeable poke, which basically means the wheel is gonna stick out past the fender wells, poking out just about a couple of inches. Now the big thing to remember with the 33s is that when you try to put these on a stock height or a stock suspension with no lift whatsoever, there will be some rubbing on your stock components. Now what you'll need to do to make 33s work and what we found out by testing it on my 2016 Silverado is that with at least 2 inches of leveling kit or a lift kit on the front end, you'll get enough clearance to make these work without rubbing when you're at full lock or full turn. Now we found that they will rub on the stock components without that, so we threw it on our 2014 Silverado with the 3.75 inch lift, which gave us the perfect amount of gap and the perfect amount of spacing to make them work with no modifications needed. Now the last thing I want to touch on, which is kind of a downfall in my opinion, is the fact that the mud terrain tires we have here will be pretty noisy on the road. If you're using your truck as a daily driver, the mud terrain wouldn't exactly be my recommendation. So if you want the best of both worlds, you want that on-road quiet and comfortable ride, but you also want a little bit of that off-road performance with better traction and a more aggressive tread pattern, you can go in between the two and get an all-terrain such as a Mickey Thompson ATZ. Now moving on to our last but not least 35 inch tire. This is obviously the biggest one we have out here and arguably the hardest one to fit 
on these different Silverados and Sierras, thanks to the square wheel well, which kind of limits the ability to fit these bigger tires. If you want to fit 35s, you'll need at least a six inch lift. Now we decided that it wasn't going to fit on our 2014 Silverado with the 3.75 inch lift. So we decided to throw this on a 2011 Sierra with that seven and a half inch lift I mentioned earlier. That truck is sitting on a Rough Country six inch suspension lift. It's got two inch lift blocks and adjustable front struts from Eibach, which equal out to a combined seven and a half inch lift. Now when we threw these 35s on that truck, it still had some rubbing, believe it or not. Now, like I said, you'll need at least six inches of lift. And with that added two and a half inches on top of that, it still had some rubbing. So we went ahead and made a little bit of modifications to make it work. Now, originally it was rubbing on the lower valance under the front bumper, as well as a little bit inside the wheel well. So we cut away just a small amount of that trim spoiler. And we also shaved away some of that inner wheel well. And now there's absolutely no rubbing at all. And it's perfectly suitable for the road. So if you're looking to fit the 35s like this one, obviously the exact same tire as the 33s, just two inches taller. This is gonna require that six inch or more lift kit with very minor modifications. I definitely wanna point out that for the 33s and 35s, we use the exact same type of tire, exact same tread, exact same wheel, and the same offset. That way we can keep the tire comparison pretty equal across the board. Only difference here is that the 35s are a bit bigger and they do cause a little bit more fitment issues. Now the general rule of thumb is for 35s, the lower you go with your lift, the more modifications necessary to make them work. Now that we've broken down the three different tire sizes, why don't we take our 2014 out with the 3.75 inch lift and the 33 inch tires, see how it performs on the road, kind of give it a real life driving test for all you daily drivers out there. We'll also talk about the benefits for off-roading, so let's get to it. It feels pretty good. I don't feel like I'm riding on, you know, mud terrain tires. I will say I can hear it. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I'll, I'll shut up for a second so you can listen. It's kind of like a humming noise. You know, you can hear the humming noise. It's not overwhelming, but it definitely is noticeable. On the highway at higher speeds, it'll get a little louder, but it's definitely still not too bad. Um, if you want to eliminate that, all-terrain tires are the better choice. They're quieter. They still have a little bit of nub there to give you uh, some added traction off-road. They're still pretty beneficial. I did notice that it was a little sluggish. Well, obviously, that's going to happen. You've got those bigger, heavier tires, wider tires you're kind of lugging around. Plus, it's got the, the nubby mud-terrain tire tread, so that's going to add a little bit of uh, resistance to it, I guess I could say. What you are gonna make up for in that downfall is off-road performance for one. When you get off-road, not only are you getting added clearance with the lift, you're adding two inches tire under your, under your suspension. So when you add that, you're actually going to get more off-road clearance. You'll see you're going over logs or you know smaller rocks or whatever, just a little bit easier because those stock 31s just, uh, they don't have number one, the traction, and they don't have the height clearance you know to get over things. Now, as far as looks go, obviously everybody has different preferences. The 33s, I think, do look pretty badass, and they're just an easier route to take. So you throw the 33s on a lift like this and you're hitting the roads, you're hitting the trails and you're good to go. Now, the wheel that you pick, you obviously want to take into consideration which offset you're using. The offset that we have here of the minus six or the negative six millimeter offset uh, was perfect for our situation. That little bit of poke that sticks out of the fenders uh, gives us some interior clearance so that when we're at full lock or full left turn or full right turn, the, uh, the inside of the wheel isn't hitting, you know, control arms or, you know, leaf springs or anything like that. I have a full turn here. I'm, I'm going to go full lock and no rubbing whatsoever. Now, when you upgrade to 33s like this, it's hassle free. I mean, especially with this kind of lift, you want to at least make sure you're getting a, I would say a safe bet would be a two inch leveling kit up front or a lift kit all around. That way you're guaranteed to clear all of this and not require any modifications. So uh, without me babbling on anymore about the 33s, why don't we take this back to the shop? We're gonna throw the 35s on this. I'm gonna show you exactly how much clearance issues will be caused by adding such a big tire to a lift like a 3.75. So let's get back to the shop and get those on. We are loaded up in my 2014 3.75 inch lift with 35s. And the 35s driving completely straight on this lift, no rubbing at all. What you can hear, however, wow, that's loud. Same exact tires. I wanna point out that these aren't nubbier than the 33s, or the exact same tire. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna make a left at this light and see how it handles this. It's not gonna be full lock, but it's gonna be you know pretty close, I think. All right, that handled pretty well. I have another turn coming up here that'll probably be full lock. 
There it is. It's actually resisting the steering wheel. I can't even accelerate because the nubs on that tire are just catching the chin spoiler. And the same thing happens to the wheel well. It rubs so hard in the wheel well that it actually slows your acceleration down. I'm surprised we made it out of the parking lot. So that it is doing better than, than I imagined. I thought it was gonna be tough to even make a small turn. So 35s on a 3.75 inch lift requires modifications, hands down, period, no questions asked with this setup. Even if you're going off-roading, you know, you gotta, you get yourself in these weird angles on, uh, on rocks. Now the 35s will give you definitely a good uh, functionality benefit and performance benefit off-road because you'll be able to tackle even bigger obstacles than the 33s would, especially with the bigger lifts. You'll have a great off-road performing truck, but if you put these on a truck that, you know, they don't really fit properly on, you're gonna have a very uh, uncomfortable ride. Turning back into the parking lot here, you just heard that rub again. So if this gets to a point, if it's so continuous, it's gonna wear down everything it's rubbing and it's gonna become a pretty serious issue. As you can see, 35s can be tricky to fit under these square wheel wells on the Silverados and Sierras. Some modification is necessary above six inches of lift. Under that, it can get even hairier. 33s are a lot easier to handle, of course. Anything from two inches on with lifts will make these happen with no modifications. And stock, pretty self-explanatory. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on cool content like this, as well as product reviews and installs. Keep it locked right here at americantrucks.com.